Hey there Kremlitz, welcome back to another video. This video will be showcasing the Abyssal Chasm. This wondrous destination offers a slice of Subnautica in Minecraft. This chasm is capable of being absolutely enormous, often stretching to depths of 120 blocks. The visibility here is as bad as it gets. Night vision and a new status effect deep sight reduce this darkness. I'll be using these effects throughout the video so you guys can see. The abyssal chasm is made up of mostly tough, deep slate, gravel, muck, and abyss marine. Muck covers the floor and abyss marine makes up the outer walls. Muck slows those who traverse on it, and breaking the block may drop sea glass shards. These shards craft into vanilla glass and depth glass. Depth glass provides better visibility underwater due to the edges connecting seamlessly. It's also used in a multi-block build for the submarine. More on that later. Oh, and unlike vanilla glass, you can pick it back up after placing it. Abyss Marine crafts into two new block sets and the Abyssal Altar. This altar is crucial for trading with the Deep Ones. We'll cover that when we get to the mob section. Spires made of tuff are covered in geothermal vents. Lava underneath forces these black plumes out. Unique life forms can be found and used in the Abyssal Chasm. Mussels can be found growing pretty much anywhere, especially in the chasm's outer walls. Over time, these increase in number and spread to nearby blocks. They grow the fastest on logs. Its primary use is to be cooked and eaten, providing 1.5 hunger and 0.5 saturation. Harvesting a mussel has a chance to drop a pearl. This item is used to craft pearl blocks, the Abyssal Altar, and act as offerings to the Deep Ones. Pearls to Deep Ones are like gold ingots to piglins. Ping pong sponges can be found growing anywhere on muck. Their primary use is to craft the floater item when combined with gossamer worm drops. This allows the user to quickly escape to the surface when underwater. The three anemones, tube worms, and bone worms are solely for making the chasm more lively. The anemones can be found anywhere. Tomb worms reside on tough spires, and bone worms do be chilling on those whale carcasses. A handful of randomly scattered structures await to be explored in this watery biome. The Deep One's obelisk is where players can leave a pearl on an altar to trade with the Deep Ones. A Deep One will replace the pearl with a random item from their loot table. The structure will light up when this exchange happens. Abyssal temples have a similar design to ocean monuments. Dead coral and sponges are located within. This structure comes in a few variants. Abyssal ruins is where things get interesting. These structures are mostly made of worn rusty plates and copper blocks. The spherical chamber variant has depth glass you can permanently borrow. Be warned, dangerous mind guardians are often found chained up at these ruins. This is an aggressive mob we'll look at in the mob section. A new valve block with redstone functionality is found here. Twist the valve to emit a constant redstone signal. This will keep doors open indefinitely until twisted back. Metal barrels are the loot containers in the abyssal ruins. Loot may include books, gunpowder, copper ingots, marine snow, pearls, scrap metal, cave tablets, fish, diving gear pieces, enchanted books, and two new pottery shirts. Some of these ruins are submarine docks, which house beaten up submarines. If needed, they can be repaired with copper ingots and deoxidized by taking an axe to its exterior. We'll go further in depth with this vessel later. It's time to explore the mobs of the Abyssal Chasm. Other than nine aquatic entities, glow squids are also found swimming around here. Lanternfish is the weakest mob. They counter this by staying in large groups. During night, they loiter near the surface, which makes it easier to find the Abyssal Chasm and collect them in buckets. Upon death, lanternfish drop their body. This item can be cooked and eaten to gain one hunger in 0.5 saturation. The raw version, along with other mob drops, crafts into deep sea sushi rolls. This food restores four hunger in 2.5 saturation. Raw lanternfish also brews into deep sight potions. This effect, as said before, removes some of the underwater fog. Tripod fish are are often found tripoding on the chasm sea floor. This is another passive bucketable fish that swims around and simply adds more life to the biome. Upon death, they drop their body. This can be cooked and eaten for two hunger in 1.5 saturation, or used in the sushi roll recipe. Gossamer worms are a frequent sight here. They are passive and bucketable. They are a swimming beacon of food for hull breakers. And in an alternate dimension, they are the cause of titan powers. Upon death, it drops 0 to 3 bioluminescence. The floater, bioluminescent torches, and glowing potions are made with this drop. The torches glow underwater, and the glowing potions are a great way to attract hull breakers. Sea pigs roam the seafloor, sifting through the muck for morsels. These adorable things are also passive and bucketable. Feeding it a muck block, mud block, or clay ball will cause it to crap out muck, sea glass shards, ouch, pearls, and marine snow. Marine snow can revive dead coral, grow sponges, and other kinds of sea life, and is used to craft pearls. To specify the other kinds of sea life, it acts like bone meal to mussels, and it duplicates anemones. Upon death, it drops itself, which can be eaten for next to no satiation, and hunger one for 60 seconds. This is another piece to craft a deep sea sushi roll. The next three mobs are part of a strange race of intelligent marine creatures called the Deep Ones. Each member's behavior towards a player is influenced by a reputation system, which is 
shared. This means if one doesn't like you, all of them don't. This reputation score can be increased with bartering and decreased by attacking them. The deep ones start at the stalking phase. They will curiously follow the player, but run away if seen. If chased and cornered, an ink bomb will be used to blind the player, allowing them to escape. The neutral phase is similar, however, they will not flee when looked at. The aggressive phase consists of them attacking you on sight. The helpful phase is when they regard you as a friend, assisting you where they can. As mentioned before, one can trade with the Deep Ones using pearls at an abyssal altar. The trading system is similar to piglin trading. The Deep Ones can offer a selection of aquatic items like fish, prismarine shards, sponges, sea glass shards, and ink bombs. The regular ink bombs inflict blindness 1 for 5 seconds, and the glowing bombs apply glowing 1 for 15 seconds. The Glazing Pearl is another item that can be traded and crafted. This will change color depending on your reputation with the Deep Ones. The Blue Deep One is the mob you'll encounter the most out of the three, and it's the weakest. It doesn't drop anything when killed. The Deep One Knight is a strong armored variant that wields either a Trident or Ortho Lance to up its damage. This lance can be attained via trades or as a rare drop when the Knight dies. It deals 6 damage and has a dash attack launching the player forward while creating multiple damaging wave projectiles. The Knight's trades are centered around melee combat. Trades include but are not limited to Tridents, Lances, Armor, Prismarine, and the Magic Conch. Using the Conch will summon Deep Ones to your location regardless of where you are. They will fight with you for a little while, so don't be a squid word, use the magic conch. Naming a deep one knight stinky fish changes its skin, which is just a fun little easter egg. Upon death, this deep one rarely drops its weapon. The Deep One Mage is a force to be reckoned with. It uses a massive bubble to travel on land. Its water projectile is capable of surrounding enemies with this exact same bubble. The way it does this is by inflicting a new bubbled effect for 10 seconds. While under this effect, your air bubbles decrease fast and you take drowning damage faster. Drinking milk does not remove the effect, but one can use water breathing to counter it. The mage also melee attacks by spinning violently and is capable of another range attack which is basically the Ortholance wave ability. Its trade table consists of of the magic conch, nautilus shells, bottles of enchanting, and the sea staff. The staff summons homing water projectiles, which sadly doesn't inflict the bubbled effect. Upon death, the deep one mage drops nothing. Mind guardians are found near abyssal ruins. They are aggressive towards the player. This mechanical guardian will not detect you unless their scanner passes over you. If this happens, it will swim over to you and explode. Evading this attack proves to be difficult even with Max Depth Strider, but it is possible due to it being restrained by a chain and anchor. Upon death, the Mind Guardian drops 0-2 depth charges. These can be thrown on land or underwater to create an explosion. Oddly enough, it's also a crafting component for the Drain Block. This block is found in some of the Abyssal Ruins. When activated with Redstone, it will push fluids through it as long as there is vacant space beneath. The Hallbreaker can be found terrorizing glowing entities anywhere in the Abyssal Chasm. Surprisingly, these giants are neutral just as long as you're not emitting light. Hallbreakers will circle prey and rapidly flash before going in for a munch. Be wary of their headbutt attack. This deals more damage and breaks blocks directly in front of it. Upon death, the beast spews out one enigmatic engine, one to ten sea glass shards, zero to five copper ingots, and anything it consumed like ink sacks. This engine is used to build in an entirely new submarine. Broken submarines can be found laying on the ocean floor or docked up in abyssal ruins. This is a new vehicle used to traverse the depths more safely and not need the use of water breathing potions. A built-in spotlight pierces the murkiness for better visibility. But consider this a double-edged sword because hull breakers will be attracted to you. Be quick to switch the light off if one is aggroed onto you. This vessel is prone to oxidation. Take an axe to it to reverse this process. It can be waxed to prevent oxidation. Just like iron golems, cracks will form to signify damage. Using copper ingots will repair it. If the submarine takes too much damage, it will simply break and disappear. If this happens, fear not, a new one can be built. A new submarine requires 20 copper blocks, the Hullbreaker's enigmatic engine drop, and 6 depth glass. 9 copper blocks on bottom, 6 blocks on top, and another 5 surrounding the engine. 6 depth glass fills the remaining spots, making a 3x3 cube. Make sure to build this in a smart place because I don't believe there's a way to put this in your inventory as an item. Drown that spawn in the Abyssal Chasm have a chance to wear diver gear. They might drop it upon death. Abyssal Rune Chest may have this gear as well. The total set gives 15 armor and 1 armor toughness. The helmet gives an additional 40 seconds of underwater breathing. This timer will replenish automatically when out of the water. The chest plate gives that 1 point of armor toughness. The leggings give plus 0.5 swim speed. And the boots grant immunity to the Muxlow. The Abyssal Chasm's advancements will be completed as you explore the biome. Following the path of these advancements will help you journey through the chasm, and they're a good refresher for certain things, especially when you don't have a cave compendium. 
The client configs allow you to modify settings like emissive rendering for Abyss Marine and toggle the thick water fog. The general configs don't have any Abyssal Chasm specific settings, so overall you don't really need to worry about the configs for this cave biome. That's about all you need to know concerning the Abyssal Chasm. Check this video's pinned comment to find the playlist containing the other Alex's Caves videos. Thanks for watching, like the video, subscribe, and consider becoming a channel member. You'll be put on screen along with these lovely people. And as always, Kremlitz, stay snazzy.